The Mattel Cyber Dragon seems to be real. Welcome to the Solemn Yu-Gi-Oh! channel where we discuss everything collecting and investing in Yu-Gi-Oh! So today we're doing two things. We're talking about the Cyber Dragon, which we spoke of last week or so. It is a Mattel Cyber Dragon and so far we only know of one in existence in the world. Now there may be more out there, but so far only one has surfaced. So that was a big deal, we'll get into that. And then we'll also go over some big sales we've been seeing the past days. So first of all, the Cyber Dragon. So if you know or don't know, quick recap. Mattel is a toy company. They had Yu-Gi-Oh toys at one point, and then some of those toys had cards in them. These were promos, usually elemental heroes and other weird ones. And one of these toys was a Cyber Dragon. Now for the longest time, it it was rumored that the card for this Cyber Dragon didn't exist, that there was never a Mattel Cyber Dragon card. Until a few days ago or a few weeks ago, someone posted his Mattel Cyber Dragon. So instantly, I made a video about it and people said, no, this is fake. This is fake. There's no way this is real. The number is wrong or this is wrong. The owner sent it off to PSA, they authenticated and then gave it a grade. Now, of course, having a healthy dose of skepticism when a card that's a one-off that no one has seen in 15 years shows up is good, you know, I get you. However, instantly calling things fake because you read some other guy saying it's fake really isn't healthy. So now PSA has authenticated it and some will probably say, yeah, but PSA has authenticated a fake card before. <sighs> yeah. Okay, they have, yes. But you know, if you wanna go down that endless rabbit hole, enjoy, it's not for me. So this card got a grade six, and now the seller, or well, owner, put up a pretty interesting message. He said, okay, look, it's real. It got PSA six, it's only pop one, only one in the world so far. And the current highest offer is $80,000 worth of Bitcoin. $80,000? That is insane. Now again, if this is actually pop one, surely there's probably some big cyber dragon collector that's willing to pay that. And I'm not gonna judge right there. However, it is only him saying that he got that offer. So you know, it's pretty easy to say you got such offer. You don't necessarily have proof. Personally, if I had that card and I got an $80,000 offer, I would still probably sell, even though I love cyber dragon, I love Zane, but 80,000 for a card that might just have a warehouse out there somewhere with a bunch of Cyber Dragon toys, with a bunch of this card, maybe in even better condition. Like that kind of potential freaks me out. Cards generally don't get made one of one and toys don't get made one of one. The machines that put these toys together and maybe put the card like slid it in automatically had to have been programmed at some point to make more than one. And so the odds are there's somewhere out there, you know, some of these boxes rotting away. So at 80,000, I don't know, I would get cold feet. Now if that offer is legit, cool, but maybe the person just wants to bait higher offers. Now again, I'm not saying that's the case. I don't know, I don't know the guy. So we'll see what goes down. We'll see if he gets it sold for that price or even higher. And of course, I will once again keep you updated. So now for some more all-time high sales, we have four cards I wanted to discuss. First of all, we had a PSA 9. Raigeki first edition from LOB sell for $1,000. That is high. Two weeks ago or so you could get it for 500. So maybe people are starting to appreciate the magic and spell cards. And you know, if you had listened to my mail day the other day and just bought some shit, mm, nice one. Still mind blowing stuff though. Now, some people would call this price crazy because it's only a super, but then you consider how expensive the boxes are right now. I don't think it's all that easy to even reliably pull any of these great supers. And what did this pack sell for? 1,500, some insane price like that? I mean, good luck. It's also part of the Power 5, if you wanna call it that, some of the strongest magic cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Obviously by now it's been power creeped out, but for the longest time it just was banned because of how good it was. Just something to consider. Um, this price is high for sure, because again, like it just doubled in a week or so, but it's not mind blowing if you look at the LOB pack and box price. Now, could that retrace down? Surely, who knows? There's a, still a big backlog for PSA. Who knows how many were sent in? Definitely not as much as a variety of other cards that are much riskier than that. You always want to have a bit of a rational view on this stuff. Next up, speaking of a rational view, we had a Lost Art Dark Magician Girl sell on Probstein on, on eBay for $1,800. What? Now in the title, it says Pop 1. And firstly, it isn't pop one, it's pop two by now. I don't know if they didn't update it or, or were lying straight up, but it's pop two currently on the PSA registry and more importantly, there's still 
thousands of people waiting for their Dark Magician Girl to get graded. People sent that in on the lowest service level or the second lowest service level. So it's very likely that in six or eight months, we will start seeing Dark Magician Girls flood the market. Now, last time I covered the sale of a Dark Magician Girl Lost Art for $1,000. So not only has it almost doubled in price, but more importantly, if it's only pop two, what does that mean? Either the two Lost Art Dark Magician Girls in existence were both instantly flipped by people who realized that this card isn't all that rare. Or the person who bought the Dark Magician Girl for 1000 now instantly sold it for 1800 And in that case, job well done, right? Wow, you made some songs on a quick flip. I don't know which of the two is the truth, but it's something to think about, you know. Currently, the pop is two. Now again, there's so many of these sent in. I know companies who had batches all sent in. But again, you don't send that in express. The express fee is double that, the value of the card itself. So they're all on that lowest bulk submission level. They're all gonna be coming onto the market in six to eight months. While Dark Magician Girl is definitely iconic and it may be hard to grade. If you check the pop report right now, two and 10, but like 17 and nine, it's quite hard to grade. But does that justify a jump from $50 to $1,800 just of grading a 10? I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I would feel, oof, I don't know. And again, I have like six of that being graded right now. So it's absolutely in my best interest that this card gets hyped to the moon. I will gladly sell mine at this ridiculous price if I get a 10 that is. But still, you know, have to have some healthy rationality when dealing in this stuff. Again, of course, unless you are a Dark Magician Girl fan. If you just want that for your collection, you already have your gorgeous MFC and you have the other ones as well. What's, what's it, LCK? If you just want that for your collection, have at it, you know, but I personally think you'll get one for cheaper a few months down the line. Then we had two GX Ultis sell for quite a lot. First, we had a PSA 9. Shining Flare Wingman Ultimate Rare First Edition sell for almost $2,200. That's a lot, you know. Very often, my, my baseline of how I look at prices, if I see a 9 sell at a certain price, I assume that the 10 will be about three times that price. Now, that's not always the case, you know. That's just the ballpark I work off. So that would put the Shining Flare Wingman in a 10 at about 6,600. Now again, you can't just say that's the market price now because the nine sold for that, you know, until a 10 properly sells for that, you know, consistently, reliably getting those offers and, and actually goes for that. It's not the market price, but it's something, you know, in the back of my head, how I think about it. 2,200. For the longest time, we didn't have major movement on GX Alties. Of course, they have grown, like they have grown well, but the amount of doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling that we saw on the dual monsters era, we didn't really see quite as much on the GX era yet. A reason for this, in my opinion, is again something we can see in Pokemon. When you had the Logan Paul hype, you had all this hype around base set, base set this, base set that, base set first edition, wow, base set. And so everyone just went wild over those Charizards. Some other cards which were way more rare and way lower pop compared to a lot of base set cards or even a lot of jungle fossil cards were kind of pushed like away, you know, like your gold stars, which are gorgeous cards, very rare, very low pop. They didn't grow quite as much as all the hype around base set and, and so forth that the Logan Paul hype created. And so while they grew, it took a little while for them to then really get that spotlight. And I feel that's what we're seeing now as well. You know, the big collectibles hype, People first go for the first. Oh, the LOB, oh, the blue eyes, oh, the blue eyes. And you know, those will likely end up winning long term. However, as you start peeling off the layers and people, you know, flow through the ecosystem and they're like, oh, there's more than this and there's more than that. That's when you start seeing people go for very rare items that still have iconic value, but just aren't those very oldest. So yeah, Shining Flare, Wingman, PSA 9, 2.2K, that's pretty crazy. Again, like I covered in my GX video as well, I do believe that the two Grail cards for GX will end up being Shining Flare, Wingman and Cyber End, depending on if you're Edgelord or Protagonist fan. And speaking of Cyber End, another sale we had on a PSA 9 was 2000 $200 on a PSA 9 Ultimate Rare First Edition Cyber and Dragon. Once again, that is mind-blowing. It's about the same price. So, so far, they seem to be 
neck and neck, who's gonna be the grail card? Again, I think it's just both, depending on what kind of buyer you are. When I look at myself, I'm like, whoa, Edge Boy, Cyber End. I'll gladly buy 50 of that card. And then E Heroes, I'm like, they're cool, but I'm not buying them. Whereas I know a lot of people who are just collecting elemental heroes and then Cyber like, ah, all right. So I definitely think it's more like a two camp kind of thing than a let's all go for the same shit kind of thing. Now, fun note, the Cyber End sold for, uh, I think like a dollar more than the Shining Flare. Ha, huh, just a thought, who's winning? Team Edge Boy, oh yeah. Of course, when it comes to eBay sales, you always want to consider a buyer backs out. Like for example, with the Dark Magician Girl Lost Art, that was a bid auction. So maybe someone was shill bidding, something weird was going on. So I'll of course keep you updated if anything happens there. But so far, that's what the sales suggest. Now on Buy It Now, you don't often get like shitty buyers quite as much as in the bidding. Because in the auctions, you know, shill bidding will often result in people inflating market prices, where in a buy it now, eh, it, it just happens less. Now, of course, there are shit buyers out there who will back out, who will say like, yeah, my son bought this, sorry, I, I didn't want it, sorry, just cancel it, like that shit happens. But you know, it's, it's a bit more rare, I wanna say. That is all, like, subscribe, and I will see you soon, ciao.